Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 22 and today we are returning with the season finale as we play our final two Premier League games against Brighton away and Crystal Palace at home. Before we play the games though, shout out Carmen getting on off camera. And of course, just the one game off camera after our draw against Watford and our defeat to Manchester City in the last episode. Uh, we took Manchester United away at Old Trafford just three days after our defeat against their rivals and we got battered by three goals to nil. The team was really tired heading into the game, so I made loads of changes to the lineup. Patterson came in, Metham came in, Bennett came in, uh, more pie came in to the team as well. It was just a, a really, really weakened team out there. And uh, we lost by three goals to nil and definitely deserved to lose the game. And uh, yet another goal got conceded from a set piece as well. The amount of goals we conceded from a set piece this year is just absolutely laughable. But yeah, 3 0 the final score. And that means that our poor run of form continues. Just one win in our last eight games. Our two games to go, Brighton away and Crystal Palace home in the Premier League right now. We are still in seventh with the final two games to go. Because as we know now, due to Bournemouth winning the Carabao Cup, we have to finish in sixth to finish in a Europa League spot. And Spurs can pretty much guarantee that we won't be able to catch them if they win their... Oh, hang on. Where's... I thought... Hadn't they played their game in hand against... Oh, I guess that wasn't a... Uh... Oh, no, because we... No, no, we played one extra, didn't we? We played one extra in midweek. That's why. I was going to say, why they got a game in hand? That's why, because our game extra came midweek. So, yeah, Spurs win their game in hand. They will be six points clear of a much better golden record. And that will mean no matter what we do, really, we won't be able to catch them. So, uh, yeah, first game is against Brighton. And let's see how we get on. I think it's pretty much over now. But we'll see how we finish. And let's hope, let's hope we can finish in seventh anyway. And uh, I'll, I'll certainly take that. I mean, I'll take ninth, to be fair, after what has been a really su uh, successful year, despite a poor ending. So this is our team for the game. No one injured right now. 4 one 2 3 We've got an honor in goal. Back four gone Calves, Evans, Maguire and Claude. With our midfield trio being Camarasa, Rules and McKenney. On the wing, Sessegnon and Jason. And up top, Paleo and Maria. On the bench, Moreira, Methan, Patterson, Sabolka, Silva, Murphy and Vardy as well. First game, it's Brighton away. Let's just try and get back to winning ways here. Come on, you blue birds. Obviously, we know now it's pretty much guaranteed we won't be finishing in that sixth place. But again, as I mentioned a moment ago there, it's still been a fantastic season. It's just a shame that right at the end, we have totally bottled it and completely lost any chance whatsoever of finishing in that sixth and final European place. And as Andone makes it 1-0, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And we might well end up dropping to ninth place come the end of the season as well. Andone makes it 1-0, Brighton in front early. It's no coincidence that our bad form coincided with a Jason injury. No way. I mean, as soon as he went down, we started to struggle. As Sessegnon finds Maria, and that is a terrible, tame effort from Paleo there, as it's still 1-0. We just, we just haven't recovered since he went down in training. And since then, we've looked a totally different team to the one we saw for the majority of the campaign. But still 1-0. Good for us to get our first chance. Now let's get our first goal and get back on level terms. Vic Camaras about to Maguire as we'll play out from inside our half. That's a terrible ball forward. No need for that. Keep it on the ground. And now as Brighton send it long, Maguire's caught out. Santos is through, and it should have been two. Just noticing as things stand, we're dropping to eighth place in the table, so Fulham will leapfrog us and go into seventh place. Again, it shouldn't matter. If that does mean they get European football, I'll be livid come the end of the season as rules find space and shoots and scores again. But one consistent factor throughout the entire campaign is that this guy's been fantastic. And I think at least eight or nine of his goals this season have come from outside the area. It's another one for Joe. It's another assist for Claude as well. That's his eighth of the year in his debut season in English football. Finds Joe Rules, open up his body, lovely finish to the bottom corner. What a year he's had! Very good start to the game. This as both teams are still desperately trying to find a late run for European football. But as Santos makes it 2 1, our defense is just absolutely abysmal. You know, we signed Maguire this season, we signed Gon Calves, the, the young kid at left back as well, we signed Adjapong at right back. But it's just it's the same old story. We cannot defend Santos sent forward, Onana's angles there are absolutely terrible. And it's 2-1, Brighton back in front. We're still playing with that higher defensive line, and I really think next season I might change that. Obviously, because long-range goals are so common in this year's FM, I feel like it is the best defensive strategy, but because our, our, uh, our centre-backs are quite slow, they do get caught out quite a bit. But 2-1, uh, I'm going to say to the boys at the break here, show me something else in the second half. We fired them all up. Second half to begin, as things stand, there's going to be one win in our last nine games. We have thrown away any chance of European football. That's the worst part about it. Like, if we didn't have this good run throughout most of the campaign, I wouldn't be annoyed about this poor run of form. But instead, we had a shot of European football. We've bottled under the pressure. 
Come on, Maria, off you go, off you go, off you go. Well done, wins it first, gets in behind, shoots, and Matt Ryan makes the save, and it's cleared away. Come on, 20 minutes to go. We can't afford to lose this. Chance for Brighton to get a third goal and wrap up the game here. Is Kaleda down the left-hand side, crosses to the edge of the area. Header comes in, just wide the post. It's another poor defensive display today. So many attempts allowed in our goal. 17 allowed in our goal today. Not good enough. Obviously, I said in the last episode, we weren't targeting a European place at the start of the season. So, we, we've got to take that into consideration. We've got to remember that. At the start of the campaign, we had absolutely no intention whatsoever of finishing in the top half of the table, really. So, to, to finish around 7th, 8th, ninth place is still a really good third season for us. But it's just, it's just the way it's ended, do you know what I mean? It's like, had we had a really inconsistent season the whole way through, I'd be like, oh, well, fair enough, it's not meant to be. But it's because we, we were in such a good position heading into the final, like, 7 or eight games to, to, to throw it away is just really disappointing we, we, we could easily be in sixth place right now instead we stay in seventh with two games uh, past Spurs right now they've got two games in hand and they're also three points clear and that means now unless they lose all of their final three games and lose them badly and we win on the final day they'll finish in sixth and we'll finish either seventh eighth or ninth place and Spurs just beat Palace away at Sellers Park. So, so that confirms it. Spurs will finish in that sixth and final European place. We remain in seventh. I, I'm quite curious, though, because the, the blue highlight is still in seventh. Now, I swear in previous versions of FM, when it was guaranteed that seventh wouldn't be good enough, because, again, one of the teams below you had uh, won the Carabao Cup or finished in the FA Cup final, um, that the blue highlight would go even if the season wasn't over. So I'm, I'm quite curious as to why that hasn't been taken off yet. Now, I'll be very annoyed if we lose on the final day and one of Fulham or Brighton sneak into seventh and they qualify for the Europa League. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm pretty sure it'll be taken away after the final game has been played. But either way, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Maybe there is a chance it could guarantee European football. Who knows? Oh, God, and when it rains, it pours. That was another injury. Sessing out for one or two days, but he should be back for the Sunday game against Crystal Palace. But Maria, out for the final day with an injury. Typical. And again, here we see as Larson takes my press conference. He says here, a defeat could see Cardiff fall out of a continental qualification spot. So presumably you're stressing the importance of a good performance to your players. So I I don't know. I mean, it, it, it shouldn't happen because again, when you, when you look at the rules, it, it does say... That based on the uh, where are we here? Uh, where are we? based on the winners of the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, teams in seventh position qualify for Euro Cup second qualifying round. And I, I know in previous years it would take out seventh if the team if a team below the qualification spots won the Carabao Cup. So I don't know. I actually don't know. I, I tell you, if if we do lose on the final day and we drop out of seventh, and that is good enough for Europe. I am going to tear my hair out and I'll tear this goatee off my face as well. Here we go, final day of the season then. And it is Crystal Palace at home. They've got nothing to play for. They've been relegated. So surely we're going to return to ways, uh, return to winning ways here on match day 38. Uh, there's only one, uh, sorry, two things to be decided then uh, for the uh, final day. Arsenal and Liverpool separated right now at the top of the table by just a one point. And uh, wow, Liverpool scored 104 goals. Oh my goodness. And the bottom three have already confirmed as well. And also City could sneak into fourth place if they won the final day and Chelsea failed to match their result and again maybe 7th could be good enough for European football who knows so let's just at least, let's, let's at least win the game to give us a shot so here we go then final game of the season and let's see how we get on I was going to play the 4-4-2 for the game and now Maria is down we'll go with our 4-1-2-3 again and this will be our team O'Nana in goal but for gone Calves, Evans, Maguire and Adjapong in midfield Cam Rasserules and McKenney on the wing Sessegnon and Jason and up top Jamie Vardy on the bench Marrera, Metham, Patterson, Saboka, Silva, Murphy and Neil Mopai as well. Final game of the season, and let's just win it and give ourselves a shot. Come on, you Bluebirds. Well, look at that. Gunnison now plays for Crystal Palace. That's interesting. Oh, he's on loan from PSV. We let him go for a free after season one, and uh, he's now on loan here at uh, Crystal Palace. They've got Modric in the team as well. I love that. I tell you what, I'm, I'm tempted to snap him up next season. I would not be against Luka Modric playing for us, along with David Silva as part of our midfield. That would be brilliant. Right, so say to the boys passionately, uh, we can potentially drop out of qualification spots. We fail to get a point here, so go out there and impress me. Only one player has been motivated by that. They don't even want European football. Come on, Cardiff. First chance falling, five minutes in, as Victor Camarasa on the ball. is going to play it to Joe Rawls, and out wide is Goncalves, the kid, as he goes for goal. Oh! 
And Vardy shot the night by Guys, hasn't scored a goal all season long, the 18-year-old. Almost saved his first on the final day of a cracker off the crossbar. Good start. Come on, Cardiff. Haven't won in Wales in such a long time. Let's get it done here. Camaras are out wide towards Gon Calves. And the kid once again showing his attacking prowess. And Jason denied by Geiter on the line. And Crystal Palace escape. Good start at this, particularly from our left back, but still 0-0. Also, I'm pretty sure I saw that Fulham and Brighton are playing each other on the final day as well. So that's pretty interesting. If they draw, we only need a draw to finish in 7th. Still 0-0, 12 minutes to go. We've, we've played well. Haven't found a breakthrough yet, though. So it's 0-0 here and 0-0 at Craven Cottage as well. As things stand, this will be enough for us to finish in 7th. I'm going to say to the boys we've been unlucky so far because we've played well, just haven't found that breakthrough. I will individually criticise the attack and also the midfield as well. Second half to begin, no change to our tactics. Let's leave things as they are and let's see if we find that breakthrough and get ourselves in front. I'm going to be absolutely livid if 7th place does actually give you European football and we drop out of it on the final day. Come on, card. If one goal should be enough in this game. Still tied at 0-0. 35 minutes to go. Come on. I'm going to switch to our 4-4-2 here. And I'm going to bring on Neil Mopai for Weston McKenney. Uh, and we'll pop camera up deep line playmaker. I'm going to bring on David Silver for Joe Rawls as well. Take off two players on yellows right here. 20 minutes to go. Can we find a winning goal? Come on, come on, come on. Oh, and Fulham must be winning as well because we haven't got a goal update. But have taken over us in the table and have gone into seventh. So we, we, we need to get a goal. We need to get a goal. Come on, boys. Let's go extremely direct. Stop playing out of defense as well. It'll be more expressing our creative freedom and uh, extremely high our tempo as well. Ten minutes. I, I can't believe this. We're going to bottle away seventh place on the final day. Josh Murphy on for Gon Calvez. We'll play Sessegnon now as a wing back. Same as Adjapong as well. We'll put Murphy and Jason now in a 4-2-4 as we'll try and find a late chance to win us this game. But instead... We are going to drop to 8th place on the final day. If that gives you European football, I'm going to go absolutely ballistic. I'm going to shave my goatee into a chin strap. A minute to go. Come on, Cardiff. Silver wins it. Mopai. Vardy. Yes, Jamie. Vardy scores. And out of nowhere, we might have won it to death. We haven't won in Wales since March, I believe. But Vardy on loan from Leicester has rescued us. And that will keep us in seventh. It was Luka Modric on the ball. Uh, gives to Cleverly. Gives it him back. Luka dispossessed by David Silva. Mopai into Vardy. Takes a touch. And what a signing. Jamie Vardy has been on loan this season. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant bargain. 1-0. And that should do it. I, again, I don't think it's going to be enough. So I don't know why I'm celebrating it. But it is 1-0. And at least we have a win. Finally, we've got a win. And we'll do it on the final day. And finish in 7th. Unless Crystal Palace can get back on their all terms. Cleverly's ball is headed out of play for a goal kick. And that will do it. Final score. Cardiff 1. Crystal Palace 0. Is that enough for Europa League place? Jamie Vardy, deep into stoppage time. I tell you what, he's coming back next year, no doubt about it. He's got one year left in his contract at Leicester. I'm bringing him back next year, no question. So, 1-0 to final score. We'll see now if that is enough for European football. Again, the blue highlight is still there. And we haven't got the EC there. I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't be enough. Uh, it, it says we qualify for the Euro Cup, but I, I don't think it is. I, I don't think that's enough. I really don't. We get ourselves the win. We do hold on to 7th. But I still don't think we have actually qualified for, for the Europa League. I still don't think it actually counts. Just advance one day in the calendar. I've got a nice little achievement unlocked there. I don't know what it is. But uh, again, I, I don't think it's good enough. Despite the fact that we just got the... Uh, oh, wow, one manager of the year. I won manager of the year. No way. I've never won manager a month, but I won manager of the year. That's incredible. That, well, that's a nice surprise. I don't care if we finish in Europe now. I've won manager of the year. So, if, if we know it, it still doesn't say EC. I still don't think it's enough. I still don't think it counts. So, for our end of season awards, uh, Jason was voted fans player of the year for the second year running. Not a real surprise. Although, to be fair, the boys that followed him up, Sessignon and Maria, both had really good campaigns as well. Uh, rules won goal of the season. Let's watch that. 
I mean, to be fair, he had like three or four goal of the season contenders this year, so it's not a real surprise that he's the winner. Let's have a look at it. Which one was this? Oh, yeah, this is the goal. We, we saw this, didn't we? A couple of episodes ago. Oh, look at that from Joe Rules. No wonder that's goal of the season. Absolutely glorious from our number eight. And uh, gone Calvez, no doubt about that. Our sign of the season. £900,000 is all it costs for our 18-year-old. Not described as a wonder kid, but he is really a wonder kid left back. Absolutely brilliant and a great season in terms of progression as well. Two assists in the 32 games and uh, the young player of the season was Player Maria having his uh, sort of breakthrough year if you will despite a couple of big injuries for him 17 goals in 28 games phenomenal Cardiff will justifiably look back on the season with a smile on their collective faces as they defy pre-season expectations of relegation and instead mounted a campaign in which they secure continental qualification for next season. The Bluebirds have won the competition surprise packages, constantly, uh, consistently defying expectations and, owing largely to an impressive spell of form between August and December that saw them rise to fourth, were able to celebrate a successful campaign. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. How we finish in Europe, I don't know. The season has finished now, and it's time to focus on what we can achieve going forward. I think we can finish in the top half next year, and you need to come back for pre-season with the same level of ambition, and everyone is delighted with that. So, morale's boosted towards the end of the season. I've won manager year. We'll get the boys back early. But again, the, 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 the question still remains. Are we in the Europa League next year or not? Well, our initial budgets have just been given to us. Uh, once again, it's the same really as season two and season three. £46.8 million pounds in the transfer budget, which is good enough for me. So we should be able to bring in a couple of good players uh, in the summer transfer windows. Our bank balance shoots up to £42.5 million. Pounds. Uh, I think I'll advance like six or seven more days in the calendar and see what happens. Because I, I still don't know whether it's it's good enough or not. There, there is no EC. The blue highlight is there. Again, I still think we've missed out, but I, I just don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. So the final domestic game of the season is this one. It's Manchester United versus Chelsea in the FA Cup final. United finished in the top four and Chelsea finished in fifth. So we'll see who wins that. And I'd imagine after this game, we should be able to find out whether we have got a European place next season or not. Well, it says we do. It, it, once again, we've got another email confirmation here. It says we have qualified for the Euro Cup, or the Europa League, if you will. Have we now got EC next to our name? We don't. So I, I, think, we, I think we're getting misled here. I think they're winding us up. I don't think we have finished in a European spot. Because Bournemouth won the Carabao Cup, I don't think it's good enough. We can't keep keep advancing through the uh, through the calendar and, and waiting to find out. We'll end today's episode there in the season finale there. <laughs> well, we actually don't know if we're in the Europa League or not. I don't think we are. I'm pretty sure we're not. But the blue highlight is still there. But I, I still think, despite the emails we've got, we have missed out on qualification by a single point. So we'll end the episode and the season there, guys. So a big thank you for watching Season 3. And despite missing out on Europe, or so we think, it still has been an amazing season. And thank you very much for watching Season 3. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy this third season, then please do drop a like, as likes are, of course, very much appreciated. And they really help the channel out as well. Uh, much love to you. Have a fantastic day. And what we'll do is we'll return with an end of season season special which is a special in-depth look at the save after every like three or four years in my fm saves i do an in-depth look at the save where i'll go through things you normally wouldn't see in an fm episode things like our coaching and our recruitment and our medical team setup and in-depth look at our finances what goes on in the hood if you will of the fm save and what's going on around the world as well we'll come back for that on saturday morning so we'll have a day off tomorrow and then on sunday morning we'll come back with season four where cardiff might be in europe they might not be i guess it would just be a nice surprise have a great day guys much love to you and I'll see you for the special in-depth look at the save very soon. Bye now.